Hello, everyone. David Alfred Ostrowski here. And in this recording, I'm going to be demonstrating the deployment of Google Cloud Functions. So this allows you to essentially put together some of the smallest components of what ultimately can support the installation of microservices through the Google Cloud Platform. We're going to deploy a single function and then invoke it from the Google Cloud. So let's get started. Here I have the console cloudgoogle.com up and running. And I'm already logged in with my Google account. If you don't have that, once again, I'd encourage you to look at the terms and conditions and be careful to make the association with any billing accounts. You want to disable your billing when you're complete with any types of experimentation to turn off the clock, okay, against any of your resources and avoid any unnecessary bills that are anticipated. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner here, I have a project instantiated. Let's just take a quick look at that. If you don't have a project, you want to click a new project. And again, you want to be aware of the billing and the conditions and set up appropriate billing alarms as well. So you're aware of any type of resource allocation. Once I have my project set appropriately, I need to associate a billing account. So I search a search on bill or billing. And I see here, I have project has no billing account. So I can't accomplish anything again without a billing account. So I'm going to go and click on manage billing accounts. And I have my billing accounts, my projects. Let me click on my projects. All my billing is disabled. And that's just the way I want it. This is how I want to start my project. This is how I want to end my project. So there's no surprise. I'm going to click on the three periods under actions. I'm going to do change billing and I'm going to select one of my three billing accounts. You want to keep these minimal. If one billing account is fine, you don't need three. So I have a billing account and I have a project set. Now I can click on to the upper right corner and activate the cloud shell. It gives me a cloud shell terminal that shows up at the bottom of my screen and I can perform all my activities here. Let me expand this a little bit and I have a little bit more room. And I have a lot of prior activities. Okay, now I don't see a project set here so I can do a G Cloud. In this case, I can do a G Cloud projects list. It may ask for authorization. It didn't, okay, that's fine. And I want to set my project. So I'm going to do a G Cloud config set project. And I'm not going to put the project name, rather the project ID W project 365 321. Now I have my project set. It shows up in the yellow at my prompt. So now I know that I'm good to proceed with the project here. And as mentioned, I have a number of different experiments here. I'm going to create a new folder to run this so I don't have any confusion and I can start from a clean slate here. So I'm going to create a directory. I'm going to call it function demo five. I have a four, let me do a five. I'm going to CD to that. So if you're not familiar with the some of the basic Unix commands, you might want to take a look at those. Okay, I'm just using some basic uh, Unix activities here. Another uh, command that you're going to want to set up if you don't have it already is install the Golang programming language if you haven't installed it prior. And let me get the commands for that. I'm not going to do it right here. Let me pause for a second. 
Okay, so Go is not default under your CloudShell terminal. So you'd have to install it. I use a sudo apt-get update. And then beyond that, I did the sudo apt install golang-go. And that installed the Go. We're not going to go through that at this point. I'm just going to assume that it is already installed if you haven't. Once again, you'll want to proceed to give this demo to work appropriately. Now, instead of typing in the function called, I'm going to just do a git clone and pull in my copy along with a necessary configuration file. So I did a git clone for my repository. And again, if you miss that, I can provide that to you that you can perform that and pull that in. Really take a minute, and there we go. We're back up. Oh, that was. A, I'm sorry. I did the. I did the install a goal line. That was. I thought it pulled in the get clone. There. There we go. It didn't look right. There we go. So there, I pulled in the Google Cloud function. So this is going to produce the necessary directory. And I have a readme documentation file. And I have my function that I'm going to um, deploy. And I have a mod file that is uh, support the configuration as a module defined and version of Go. Let's look at the Go function. It's very, very basic. So I'm not serving, I'm performing a web server, I'm rather serving a function. So this could be a popular function that's going to be used across the applications. And this can provide the means of, suitable means of doing a more sophisticated application, building on common functions that you define that are readily accessible in the cloud and obviously can be shared across applications. So here the package go and I do an import. On that HTTP and I've defined a function I call a function F and a function is going to take the response writer and the HTTP request. It's going to have a message and it's going to write the output. So it's very similar in nature to the web server. However, I'm only serving a function and not a complete application. So the next command I'm going to have to run is G Cloud Services enable cloud functions .googleapis.com. And that's set, and I'm going to do an export on a environment command for the Go programming language. Export Go 111 module on. And again, if you're initializing the mod, you may, I'm going to include some extra commands to support the generation of the mod file. In this case, I'm just going to, since I have one already defined that you're going to pull down from the Git repository. I'm just going to do a deployment and I'm going to bring in a template command here. We're going to do a slight modification on that. 
So I'm going to do G cloud alpha functions deploy and the function is called F. So I'm going to rename that as F. Entry point. Double check that. I'm sorry, the name is, the entry point is F. That's the actual name of the function. And I'm going to deploy the hello function. Use the runtime and go one on one, trigger HTTP, set the environment parameters, and I'm going to set my project ID to my current project ID, which is W project. Make sure you get it right. 365-321. And let's do the deployment here. So this may take a few minutes to perform. In fact, I know it's going to take a few minutes. So I'm just going to do a hold and I can come back when it's complete. It's going to take about three minutes. Okay, I'm back. That took about two extra minutes here. So if you see here, I have a HTTP endpoint that's been defined. And I should be able to grab this. Do a copy here and a paste. And I'm going to use the curl command. And if you see here, it didn't skip the line. I had the whole world showed up again. I can perform that again. I can also put this in a web browser, which the curl command is essentially managing that from the back end. And you can see the whole world is generated here. So I was able to define a Just cat that hello.go. So able to define this function and basically deploy it to the cloud. I already had the configuration file, the mod file already set up. And then I was able to invoke it from either the curl utility or a web browser. And this is in what's known as representative state transfer or REST style programming, where I can just invoke a given function as if it were a web service. So obviously web service or microservices are using this as a base technology and it's going to provide a lot more features in terms of accessibility and uh, configuration. But this is the basic mechanics of that and you can quickly get it up and running and see exactly how this might be leveraged towards your application activities. So before I wrap up, I am going to go back to my billing as mentioned. And I'm going to disable my account. And that is going to turn off any of the billing for this. So I'm going to go to W project, do a disable billing. And most importantly, watch it return that I have all my billing disabled. And once again, that's the best practice. So we're all good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this recording. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or issues, feel free to contact me. Thank you for listening.